Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. Today's video, I'm super excited because we're gonna do my April perfume tray. And April is my birthday month, so I am very excited to pick out perfumes for the month. And I have my birthday perfume picked out, so I'm really excited for this tray. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie, and on this channel we mostly talk about perfumes, so thank you very much for clicking on my thumbnail today. I hope you will consider subscribing, and also hit that notification bell so you are notified every time that I upload. If you are interested in seeing my March perfume recap, I always do a recap of the month before and then I pick out 10 new fragrances to focus on for the upcoming month so if you're interested in seeing that then just keep on watching all right guys let's start off with my perfume tray for the month of March there were some fragrances in here that I'm not so sure about and they may be leaving my collection which is why I do these trays to really get to know the fragrances and really determine whether or not they're gonna stay because if you've been watching my channel you know that I am trying to curate the perfect collection for me nothing but loves for me so let's start off with the house of Amouage and this is love tuberose so this one is going nowhere because this one is definitely one of my favorites and this is the type of tuberose that I really like it's more of a bubblegummy tuberose but not so bubblegummy that it's over the top, but it is sweet. There's a sweetness to this. There's definitely bubblegum tuberose, and then there is some gardenia, but there's whipped cream in here, which makes it very lactonic, creamy feeling, and the white florals and that gourmand aspect, the floral gourmand feel to this fragrance is quite lovely. Uh, this is not a beast mode fragrance on me, but it definitely lasts, and I can smell it just fine on me all day. I enjoyed this one so much. I thought it was perfect for the month of March. This is just a really good springtime, like transitioning to springtime type of fragrance because it still has that gourmand feel to it, and I just thought it was perfect for the month of March. So really enjoyed this one. If you like tuberose, definitely check this out. This is by Amouage Love Tuberose. Another one that I wore a lot of this month and I was so happy to get wears out of this one because this is one of my just all-time favorite perfumes. I really think this could be a contender for top 10 for life. This is by Bond Number no. 9 and this is Greenwich Village. What a gorgeous fragrance this is. This is fresh, it's aquatic, it's got lychee, it's got praline, it's got florals, it's sweet, it's airy, it's perfect for this time of year. It's like fruity sweet, but you know, it's a fruity floral, but it's just an elevated fruity floral to me with lots of ambroxin and muskiness. It's very musky, very feminine. Performance on this is so, so good. It is so good. It lasts all day. And the wafts that I get from this fragrance throughout the day is so pleasant and so enjoyable and it's not a perfume that is obnoxious and loud but you can definitely smell it throughout the day and it lasts on me all day long. Yeah, this one is one that I'm a little late to the game. I didn't purchase this one right away. I know this one was really hyped up a few years ago and I didn't think I'd be interested in it but then I tried it and fell madly in love and it has quickly become one of my all-time favorites. So just a 10 out of 10 in my opinion. The scent and the performance is fantastic. And I know we always talk about the bottle. My husband hates these bottles. He thinks they're very tacky. <laughs> he says they look cheap, which I think is hilarious because this is not a cheap perfume. I actually really like this bottle. I'm a big fan of this color. And I like the Bond Number no. 9 bottles, but I think I'm in the minority. <laughs> I think most of you guys don't like it, but I think they're kind of cute. Anyway, besides the bottle, the fragrance is a 10 out of 10, one of my all-time favorites. So this is by Bond Number no. 9 Greenwich Village. All right, this next one needs no introduction. If you've been watching my channel, you know this is going nowhere. This is a top 10 for life for sure. This is by Zerzhov Dama Bianca, one of my all-time favorite fragrances. I'm so in love with this fragrance and it doesn't change. I never get sick of it, I never get tired of it. Every time I smell it, I just, I love it every single time. And I enjoyed wearing it so much in the month of March. This is a fragrance I feel like I could probably wear all year round and would be my wedding day scent if I were, you know, re-getting married, renewing my vows 
with my husband. I would choose this as my wedding day scent because it's perfect. It's got some florals. It actually has purple florals in it. It has violet, which is funny because I'm not usually the biggest violet fan, but in here it's just done beautifully. To me, the purple flowers are more in the background. I get more of the citrusy notes in the top. I get more of the kumquat and the lime, which I find to be a very interesting and unique citrusy combo with those florals and then you have this really delicate powdery vanilla that is just perfection it's elegant it's soft it's beautiful it's somebody said that it's innocent and i completely agree with that that is a perfect description of this fragrance it's like this fairy tale <laughs> innocent type of fragrance that i adore and I think it's so so good. So this is by Zerzhov Dama Bianca. Okay another one of my all-time favorites. This is another contender for top 10. I had some serious bangers in my tray this month but I also had a couple duds but this one is definitely not a dud. One of my favorites. This is new to my collection. This is by MFK and this is Gentle Fluidity Gold. I had a dupe of this one for the longest time and so I was really hesitant to get this but I just wanted the real thing. I smelled the real thing in store and I could tell that the real thing was better and that's what I wanted and I have no regrets. I decluttered the dupe, which the dupe was by Juliana's Perfumes. It's called Liquid Gold and it's actually a really decent dupe, but this is better and I, I just love it so much. Like I said, this is a new bottle that I just got in February and I put a nice little dent in this fragrance. This lasts on me all day. It's not, again, super, super loud, but I definitely had a nice scent bubble that I could smell and enjoy throughout my day. It is juniper berries. That kind of smells like rose to me, but not really. It's like a, like a fruity rose. And then there's lots of vanilla in here. It's so good. There's nutmeg in here. So, so good. This is feminine elegant. This is so well blended and there are no sharp edges and it is feminine and gorgeous and I am in love, like head over heels in love. I enjoyed it so much. I love the color of the juice in the bottle and this is just one that is going to be a lifer for me. I don't think I'm ever going to be, now that I have it, I don't want to ever be without it. So that is by MFK Gentle Fluidity Gold. Okay, let's talk about a more affordable fragrance, shall we? Let's talk about this one by Reminiscence, and this is Heliotrope. This is a beautiful, beautiful affordable gem. I can't really remember how much this retails for, but I think it's under $50, and it is absolutely gorgeous. This is Easter in a bottle. I got this one because of Claire Smith here on YouTube, and she said that this smelled like Alice in Wonderland. It, that's what it reminded her of, like this Alice in Wonderland, very whimsical fairy tale like fragrance, and I could not agree more. That is the perfect description of this. This is fairy tale. This is what fairy tales are made out of. <laughs> this is almond, marzipan, heliotrope, sweet but not too sweet, vanilla goodness. It kind of reminds me of like Jordan almonds in a way, like the colorful Jordan almonds that you eat at Easter time. So this, I always associate this fragrance with Easter and the performance is good. The scent is quite lovely. So this is by Reminiscence Heliotrope. All right, up next we have another one that was in my February haul that's new to my collection, but definitely not a new perfume. This has been around for a while, but I just took forever to pull the trigger and get it. This is by Parfums de Marly Safinade. Like I said, I just got this in February. So as you can tell by the dent in the perfume, I obviously just hate this. I mean, this is just the worst, right? No, I, I couldn't stop wearing this. I could not put this down. I literally loved this so, so much, and I loved it way more than I remembered liking it when I tried it. I knew I wanted a full bottle of this in my collection, but I kept putting it off, and I kept buying other things in place of it, thinking that, you know, eventually I would add it in, but I did not expect to love this fragrance the way that I love this fragrance. I wore this one a lot in the month of March, which is surprising because March is a month that I have been testing fragrances. I had a haul, I was testing new fragrances that I purchased, I have been testing a bazillion samples, and so 
you know, my tray kind of sometimes gets put in the background. I do the best I can to try to work through these, but a lot of times I'm testing new fragrances as well. So this dent is, I just, I, I could not stop wearing it. I just wanted to wear this one a lot. And I had to kind of force myself to wear some of the other ones because I kept wanting to just reach for Saffinade. Guys, why did it take me so long to buy this? This is so, so pretty. If you like white florals, if you like sweet perfumes, this is definitely a fragrance to check out. It is more on the mature side because the white florals are definitely there. There's jasmine in this fragrance and I can definitely smell the jasmine, but it's not to the point where it's really indolic. It doesn't smell, I mean, it smells kind of heady jasmine, but it's not indolic, like the flowers are decaying type of scent. But it is definitely more on the mature side, but there is a sweetness to the fragrance that kind of reminds me of the same type of orange blossom sweetness that's in Love Don't Be Shy. I don't think this smells like Love Don't Be Shy. I think this is way more mature than that, but this smells like a grown up older sister version of Love Don't Be Shy with a lot more white florals in it. And it's freaking gorgeous and I enjoyed it so much. Plus, I love this bottle. I honestly think this is my favorite Parfums to Marley bottle. And is that true? Let me look at my guys. I just noticed my Herod is missing. My husband took my Herod. I'll be right back. My husband apparently took my Herod out of my Parfums to Marley collection and put it on his shelf. So let me go get that real quick. I'll be back. Yep, this was in my husband's closet. Okay, well, Herod has been successfully brought back. This is my, Herod is my fragrance. It's not his, he keeps stealing it. Anyway, back to Saffinade. This one is probably my favorite bottle. I really love the color of the juice. The juice is an ambery, rich, warm, dark fragrance, and that's kind of what this reminds me of. There's orange blossom in here with an ambery, sweet warmth to the fragrance that really, the, this color really represents the juice in my opinion. I think it's just stunning. So the performance is okay. It's moderate. It's not amazing. It's a moderate scent bubble. It lasts about six, six hours on me and that's about it. And then I noticed I did have to reapply, which I didn't do. I just went to a new perfume. <laughs> I just found another fragrance to wear, but if you're looking for something that's gonna take you through eight plus hours, this isn't it. But I, I got about six hours if I really sprayed it on my clothes. So not terrible, but just keep that in mind. So this is by Parfum to Marley Saffinade. All right, let's talk about one that did not work out. And this one was a shock. It's gonna be a shock to you. It's It was a shock to me because when I first got this fragrance, I raved about it and told you guys how much I loved it. But I also told you that I needed you to take what I'm saying with a grain of salt because this was a haul video when I talked about this perfume and I told you I hadn't worn it yet. I reserved the right to change my mind and I did. So yes, I'm super bummed about this. This is by Chanel and this is the Chance Au Fresh, the Eau de Parfum. This is the new Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Toilette has been out for a long time. That is a tried and true loved fragrance. It's the only fragrance in my collection that I actually have a backup bottle of because I love it so much. It's my favorite freshie. So when the Eau de Parfum came out, I was super excited to try it. I actually tried it at a store, smelled it on a card, smelled it on the back of my hand, and knew I wanted to purchase it. Fast forward, I waited until the last Sephora VIB sale and purchased it at a discount. I really was waiting until it got warmer to wear it. So then I put it on my tray for March, thinking in my mind that I absolutely love it, which when I smell it off the cap, it's amazing. It's amazing. And when I smelled it on the back of my hand in store, it was amazing. But when I wore it the month of March, see it's it's gorgeous in the opening and when i spray it it's got this warm amberiness mixed with this citron these citruses it's a very interesting combination it smells like the eau de toilette but much much warmer with a lot of amber added in and i thought that i loved it because i do when i smell it out of the bottle but about an hour into the fragrance something started to happen something very wrong <laughs> 
<laughs> something very, very bad started to happen on my skin and it started to turn really, really funky. And it got really, really masculine too. You know, I didn't really think this was a feminine leaning scent. I would say that this was unisex in the beginning, but about an hour in, that amber took a weird turn and it just smelled off like it was going bad, like the fragrance was going bad. And I mean, obviously it's not, but you know how sometimes your skin chemistry mixes and then it doesn't, you know, it can, something can smell sour on one person, but not on another. It started to smell off like it was going bad. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. And then it, it got more and more and more masculine leaning the more I wore it. So this one, oh man, I'm so bummed. I thought for sure I loved this one even more than my Eau de Toilette, but I don't think I do. I'm not really ready to declutter it yet because I'm kind of in denial. <laughs> I think I'm in denial because I really thought I loved this. I'm gonna wear it one more time and if it does not work out, then I will be decluttering. This is by Chanel Chance Au Fresh. I will keep you updated on if I do choose to declutter this one or not. The other one that's not working out for me is a new one by Juliet Has a Gun. This is Ode to Dullness. It's a newer one. They have an even new, they have Juliet that just came out, which I have a sample of and am testing. I'll keep you updated on that. But this one is a like. I like it. I think it's pretty, but when it comes down to it, it's kind of boring. That's just how it is. It's, it's kind of boring to me. Yeah, I don't love this one. I don't see myself keeping it. I do see myself decluttering it. I do want to wear it one more time before I decide, but uh, don't be surprised if you see this one in a declutter. I've talked to you guys about this one a lot, so I won't go into too much detail. But yeah, Juliet has a gun, Ode to Dullness is definitely on the chopping block. All right, up next we have by the House of Tamine, Peregrina. This is just one I talk about all the time. I'll be quick. Rose, white florals, caramel, but the caramel is not thick and dense. It's like a thin caramel that complements the rose and the white florals so perfectly. There's some powdery notes in here. It's sweet, but not too sweet. It is such a gorgeous fragrance, one that snuck up on me because when I first tried it, I just thought it was okay. And then I wore it and I it was like my eyes were open. <laughs> my eyes were open to the gorgeousness of this fragrance. If you like feminine, rose, white, florally, sweet, but not too sweet fragrances. You do have to like powdery fragrances because this definitely has some powder going on. Mm, I love it so, so much. And the performance is outstanding. Lasts all day, gorgeous scent bubble. 10 out of 10, love it. So this is by the House of Tamine, Peregrina. Last but definitely not least is a fragrance that I love and is going absolutely nowhere. I enjoyed this one so much in the month of March. I wore it a lot. This is by the House of Oud Ruby Red. This bottle is beautiful and probably my favorite House of Oud bottle so far. I have four in my collection at the moment. I probably will add another. Stay tuned for that. This one, ooh, beautiful, beautiful red. But more than that, this is a gorgeous ginger fragrance. If you love ginger, this is the ginger perfumes of all ginger perfumes, in my opinion. <laughs> I tried a lot of ginger perfumes and none of them held a candle to this one. I mean, I'm not saying there's not good ginger perfumes out there, but this is the queen, <laughs> in my opinion. This has ginger in the opening, in the mid, and in the dry down. It is a ginger balm in the best possible way. There's fresh ginger, but then there's candy ginger at the same time. This is a really good transition from winter to spring fragrance, in my opinion. And I have told you guys this before, but I had tried a sample of this, but I was very late in buying a bottle just because I had heard that it did not have good performance. That is not my experience with this fragrance at all. I get really good performance out of this, actually. It lasts on me for most of the day. I can smell wafts of it. It is not filling up a room and screaming or anything like that, but I can smell it. I can smell it. People around me can smell it. My husband complimented me on it, and I get the enjoyable wafts that I'm looking for when I wear a fragrance. And on my skin and clothes, on my clothes, it lasted at least eight hours. So yeah, I definitely recommend getting your nose on this one. If you're looking for a really fantastic ginger fragrance, this is it. So this is by the House of Oud Ruby Red.
All right, guys, let's pick out 10 new fragrances for the month of April. Starting off with Narciso Rodriguez. This is Musk Noir Rose for her. This is going to be perfect for April. This is spring in a bottle. This is plum and rose and the most gorgeous feminine clean musk ever. This is absolute perfection. When I first got this fragrance, I didn't feel like the performance was very good, but I will say it has improved. I Let me wear it for the month before I really tell you how long it lasts on me and all that, but I can tell it's gotten stronger. So this is, this is such a compliment magnet. I feel like this is a man magnet, a man magnet. Like this has everything that men seem to love in a perfume on a woman. Fruity, floral, that sexy, your skin but better, pheromones, going crazy <laughs> kind of musk, you know what I mean? It just exudes feminine energy in my opinion. It is so, so good. This is beautiful in my opinion. So this is by Narciso Rodriguez, Musk Noir Rose for her. All right, so I do need to put my Valaya on the tray. I got this in February and I have snuck a couple of wares. There's a little tiny dent in here, but I imagine there's gonna be a much bigger dent after this month because this definitely screams spring. Again, the muskiness of this fragrance is gorgeous. This is a polarizing scent though. This is not for everyone. You definitely need to try this for yourself. This is going to either be beautiful on you or it's going to go horribly wrong. Some people get like a screechy, scratchy musk. Some people get cleaner out of this. It's got a woodiness to it. I think it's Akagaya wood that is in here. There's a woodiness. There's a very specific muskiness to this fragrance. It has citruses in the opening. So for some people, it's coming across as like cleaner. I've heard all kinds of different things, but for me, this is beautiful. It smells really good on my skin chemistry and it is addictive. I love this perfume so, so much. And it is a secret ninja perfume. I feel like it doesn't look like it's gonna be strong. It looks unassuming in the bottle, like it's gonna be soft, but this thing performs on me a lot. <laughs> I don't need a whole lot of sprays of this perfume. This projects and it lasts until I shower. I can smell this on me big time. Like there's a pretty big scent bubble uh, around me when I wear it. So very excited to wear this one. This is by Parfums to Marley Valaya. Every single April, every single time. Okay, I associate April with Easter, which is weird because this year Easter's in March, but normally Easter is in April, I think, right? Yeah, usually it's in April, isn't it? And so Easter, April, this perfume, go together in my mind. <laughs> this is by Zerzhoff and this is Shun Coin. I don't know why this reminds me of Easter, but man, do I love this fragrance. This was because Veronica from Veronica Says said that if she were to be reincarnated and come back as a perfume, <laughs> that this would be the perfume she'd come back as. And when she said that, I blind bought the perfume. I just did because I was like, okay, I have to check this out. I have to check it out. I have no regrets whatsoever. You know, this smells similar to me like Heliotrope from Re Reminiscence, but not the same. They're in the similar family. No one knows what the notes are in here because they're vaulted, but I definitely smell something coconut, which I don't get in Heliotrope. But I get this like almondy coconut cookie. But then I also get a lot of woody notes and then there's tea in here. So I always picture the same thing. Every single time I wear this fragrance, I picture that I am outside in the woods on a beautiful spring day and I'm eating almond, coconut, vanilla cookies and drinking tea. It's very fairy tale and picturesque for me because it really puts a real image in my brain every time I smell it of, yeah. I just always picture that scene every time I wear it and it's very enjoyable for me and I love this perfume. Really good performance on this as well. So love this one. This is by Zerzhoff Sean Coin. Okay, it's definitely time to put this one on my tray. I just did a video of the best Middle Eastern fragrances in my collection. Um, I will leave it in the description box if you missed it. But this is by Afnon and this is Le Fleur Bouquet. This smells a lot like Ex Nihilo's Fleur Narcotique. So if you like that fragrance but you don't want to spend the money on it, this is a good alternative. It's not a one-to-one -one dupe. It just reminds me of. It's similar to. This is sweet, fruity, musky, floral goodness. 
for $30. And the performance is good. The scent is gorgeous. Spring in a bottle. I just talked about this one, so I won't go into too much detail about it, but I'm definitely excited to put it on my tray for April because it is time to wear it. It is beautiful. So this is by Afnon Lafleur bouquet. All right, so I told you guys that my birthday is in April, and so I had to pick a birthday scent because I know my husband is taking me out to dinner for my birthday, and I am definitely going to be wearing by the House of Guerlain. This is Angelique Noir. This is going to be my birthday scent. I will wear it more than just on my birthday, although I do struggle to wear this unless it's a special occasion, but I'm trying to be better at that and just wear my perfumes. But this is such a special vanilla perfume. It is so special. I love this. This and Spiritus Dubla Vini are just phenomenal vanillas in my opinion. This is a green vanilla. Typically, I don't like green. There's a lot of angelica in here, but the way it's done, it's so smooth that there's nothing sharp or harsh or bitter. It's just a smooth green that complements the vanilla so well. As you guys know, I truly believe that no one does vanilla like the House of Guerlain, and this is proof right here in my hands <laughs> that it's, it's so, so good. I love it. I am so excited to wear this. This does have better performance than Spiritus Double Vini, by the way. This one's definitely not a screamer, but I can smell this one on me for a good portion of the day. I could just sit here and smell this all day. I could just sit here and do this. This is it. This is my day. <laughs> that is by the House of Guerlain Angelique Noir. All right, I have got to put this on my tray. I've had this for a while, but I really haven't had a chance to wear it yet. I got this in the winter time, so I've been waiting for the right time. This is by Givenchy and this is Irresistible the Eau de Parfum. What a beautiful fragrance this is. This is so feminine and very sweet. It's this sweet pear, a very sparkling rose. Yeah, that's what I get mostly. And then musk. It's There's some musk in here as well. It's very beautiful. It's very, very feminine. If you are someone who loves feminine leaning scents, you don't want anything that is even unisex, <laughs> this is it. If you like sweet perfumes, as a matter of fact, you have to like sweet perfumes in order to like this because this is pretty sweet. And the musk in here is very clean, clean smelling musk. To me, it's not screechy or scratchy. It's just beautiful. So this is going to be perfect for spring, but I need to wear it now before it gets too, too hot because it is so sweet that I feel like if I tried to wear this in the summer, it might be too much. So now's the time. This is by Givenchy Irresistible, the Eau de Parfum. Brand new to my collection is by Nobile 1942, and this is Café Chantal and I pretty much blind bought it. I had tested it a long time ago, remembered liking it, but could not remember for the life of me what it smelled like, and then I just bought it. Oh my gosh, this is so good. This is also another one I think it's time to wear it now. It is kind of gourmand-ish, so I don't think that I will be able to wear this in the dead heat. I don't know. I don't, I have to play with this one some more. I don't want to talk about this one too, too much. I do know that first impression of this. I love it. There's a cherry note in here that I really like, but it's not like over the top cherry. It's not Tom Ford lost cherry. It's just this sweet but sour kind of cherry that just helps to kind of accent the fragrance. There is definitely heliotrope in here. There's some star anise in here, but I wouldn't call this spicy. It's just, it's like everything's just kind of there to add a little depth and character to the fragrance, but nothing's over the top. Very powdery vanilla forward fragrance. There's iris in here, which I think is the heliotrope and iris give it this powdery kind of floral feel. Definitely vanilla, benzoin, musk, and patchouli. Not a ton of patchouli so far that I'm getting from this fragrance, but I definitely can see vanilla, musk, and benzoin for sure. I don't want to talk too, too much about it just because I haven't worn it that much. I will definitely update you guys at the end of the month and let you know, but so far I'm loving it. So this is Noble 8 1942 Cafe Chantal. Another one I really need to wear and get to know. I tested this one first. It wasn't a blind buy. I loved it. Bought a bottle of it. This is by Giardini di Toscana Celeste. I'm excited to wear this one. Brand new to my collection. I got this in March, the beginning of March, and have been dying to wear it. So here we go. I can, I just love it right off the cap. Some people say that the opening is harsh. I think there's, there's seawater and lime in the top. I think that seawater is throwing some people off. 
I've heard some people say that the, the opening's harsh. I don't get that though. I don't get a harshness. I just get, yeah, I definitely see where the seawater's coming from, but that doesn't last very long. The seawater's in the opening, which I just find really interesting. Seawater and lime, but then that candied violet comes through. I'm not even a violet person, but I adore this fragrance. Somehow the lime, the candied violet, and the raspberry in here comes together. And then the base is like, I think it's a uh, sugared vanilla, vanilla sugar or something. <laughs> vanilla and sugar, okay? That's all I know. You got me there. I'm, I'm in with vanilla. I'm in with sugar. Although I have a friend here on YouTube. Her name's Tammy. I just watched her video where she tested. She had a sample of this. I had tears in my eyes. I was laughing so hard because she hated this perfume with a fiery passion. I'm going to leave her channel linked because you need to check that video out. I'll leave the video linked. Check it out. I love her because she has way different opinions on fragrances than me. Like, I mean, we are like night and day. Sometimes when she says that something smells a certain way, it's like I get the opposite, <laughs> I feel like, sometimes of her. But I enjoy it so much. It's so entertaining for me to see someone getting a completely different experience from a fragrance. And her sense of humor and the way she describes how it smells to her, it really cracks me up. So go subscribe to her channel and watch the video because her videos are fantastic. So I will, like I said, I'll leave all her information in the description box, but uh, this isn't going to be for everyone. <laughs> Not for everyone. Some people hate this perfume, but man, do I love it. I love it so, so much. So this is by Giardini di Toscana. Celeste. Okay, I have to put this on my tray. I don't, I think the problem for me, I've had this for a while and I have yet to put it on a tray and I have barely worn it since I've gotten it. I think it's because I don't know what season to wear this fragrance. So I'm just doing it now and I'll figure it out. This is by Amouage Sunshine Woman. I bought this months ago and I have hardly touched it. Not because I don't like it, I do. I just, like I said, I don't have a clue when this is supposed to be worn. To me, this smells almost like a fall fragrance, but it's floral. And the osmanthus in here smells like apricots. But there's like this tobacco, but it's a light tobacco. So I'm thinking maybe spring is really the best time. It's got this like fruity, floral, light tobacco. I guess that's more spring. There's something kind of spicy in here too, or maybe not spicy. This is a complex fragrance in my mind. I can't, I haven't quite put this perfume together yet. I know I love it. I know I love it. It smells freaking amazing. I had a sample of it. I had two samples I went through and I couldn't get it out of my mind, so I purchased it, but I just, I haven't quite worked my way through this fragrance and I haven't quite figured out when to wear it. So let me wear it in April and I'll get back to you on it. So this is by the House of Amouage Sunshine Woman. All right, and last but definitely not least is a perfume that has been becoming one of my all-time favorites. I cannot deny how much I love this. When I first got it, I really liked it a lot. I blind bought it, but I didn't realize how much I loved it until now. This perfume, has me in a bit of a chokehold at the moment. This is by Mont Blanc Signature. I don't know what's happening, but I can't get enough of this. This is sweet. I love the clementine in here. It's like a juicy, sweet, but yet kind of tart, you know, like a clementine. You know, it kind of makes you have that little pucker, but yet there's a sweetness to it and a deliciousness to it and a juiciness to it. I really get that in here. It's really quite beautiful. There's some magnolia in here. There's some florals in here. There's vanilla in here for sure, but more than the vanilla, I get this the most cloud-like enveloping musk. I mean, this thing is just getting better and better every time I wear it. I love it so much. And the performance is really good. I've worn it a few times now, sneaking it, even though it wasn't on my tray, just keep sneaking it because I love it so much. And I can just get wafts after wafts after wafts of this cloud-like amazing fragrance around me. I am really falling madly in love with this perfume. So I'm super, super excited to wear this one for the month of April. This is by Mont Blanc signature. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. I really feel like I have some bangers on my tray for the month of April. I'm super excited. Thank you so, so much for watching. If you did find this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I hope everybody is having a fantastic day and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye.